Hey everyone, in this tutorial on ecological networks, I'm going to talk about network motifs. Uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about what a network motif actually is and then go through examples of network motifs in food webs. Okay, so let's start off um, with the definition of network motifs. So, network motifs are patterns of interactions occurring in complex networks at numbers that are significantly higher than those in randomized networks. Okay, so that definition comes from Milo et al. 2002. And when we're talking about patterns of interactions, it really focuses on sets of three or four interacting nodes in a directed unipartite network. Okay, so that's a lot of jargon, but let's kind of let's go to an actual network so you can kind of see how this procedure might actually work. Okay, so we have our directed unipartite network here. Each one of these links has an arrow, so it's it's directed. Those links um, um, denote the flow of energy through this food web, and essentially it looks for common patterns that are occurring. Typically, we're going to just focus on. Uh, three species, it will look for common patterns of interactions that are occurring between three species. So one example of a common interaction in food webs is a food chain, okay? So we have energy going from a resource to a consumer to another consumer, okay? And we, if we actually look, okay, we'll see another food chain interaction happening here, another one occurring here, another one occurring here, and so essentially, um, researchers use algorithms to identify these patterns of reoccurring interactions and essentially see which ones occur more frequently than expected by random chance. Okay. Now, the reason why researchers focus on sets of three, sometimes four, and usually never five or more species is because there's 13, um, there's 13 types of uh, three node interactions in a directed unipartite network. With four species, there's 199, okay? And it just gets more crazy from there, okay? So if we take a look at just some of the three node subgraphs, okay? And just remember, uh, subgraph is another word. You could, I could have just said subnetwork. Graph is the same thing as a network. But there's 13 possible combinations, okay? Patterns of interactions that could occur between three nodes. But in food webs, there's been a lot of research done and we've actually found that there's four types of interactions that occur much more frequently than we would expect by random chance. Okay, One of those is exploitative competition. So example, we have these two speedy uh, species uh, competing over a basal resource, energy flow uh, they're competing over. Right here we have a food chain, okay? So you can see the arrows are going from resource to a consumer to a predator. With apparent competition, we have two resources and a consumer um, with those resources. So the re resources may compete with, with one another through that consumer, that shared interaction. And finally, we have omnivory, okay? So we have, for example, we could use this as our resource here. Consumer, predator, but also this predator consumes that same resource. Okay, so it's kind of a combination between a food chain and exploitative competition. And so these are examples of um, patterns that are reoccurring in food webs, which I find reassuring because um, there lots of work on three species interactions have focused on exploitative competitions, food chains, um, apparent competition, and omnivory. And so one thing that typically people think about is how these uh, different network motifs uh, kind of form the building blocks of these larger, more complex networks. Okay, so I hope that was um, helpful for understanding network motifs.